You're about to watch a game of destiny between Zach and Jeremy Zorin, the lead developer slash designer of Star Wars Destiny. Been doing great work with the game, if you ask me. Um, I think the cards have been top notch recently. Even if we recently have worlds, if you look at the top 16, the number of different decks and character pairs in that, and not even pairs, this triple and quadruple decks, uh, was pretty astounding. It was really cool. Now, also, there's a kind of a, we're exploring a new format here with these kinds of interviews. So. We're going to be essentially asking Jeremy questions while the game is going on and still kind of refining the format. So I hope you enjoy it. Let us know in the comments section, please. We also have some previews coming, never before seen, from Way of the Force. And of course, if you haven't already grabbed one, we have Saga sets available still for Way of the Force for pre-order. Those right now, at this very moment, are shipping within a week of release. We also have booster box subscriptions where you can sign up and automatically get new boxes every time a set comes out without tr keeping track of when they're actually coming out. And if you don't know what a song set is, it's basically all the cards from the set shipped right to you. Very simple. So enjoy this video, enjoy some Way of the Force previews, and enjoy a game of Thrawn Talzin versus Yoda Hondo. Hello everyone and welcome. I am joined by Star Wars Destiny lead developer, Jeremy Zwarren, and we are going to be playing a game of Star Wars Destiny. We are here at Star Wars Worlds 2018, the second world championship for Destiny. Um, I have a Thrawn Talzin deck, um, one of the decks that I think is pretty good in the meta right now. And what are you playing, Jeremy? Hondo Yoda. I hear that deck's pretty okay. It's all right. <laughs> it's pretty consistent. Um, so we're going to be going through the game and showing a couple previews and talking about the design and, and some various tactics and probably having Jeremy point out where I'm making mistakes. Um, and we'll just be covering, uh, you know, having a good time. So uh, welcome and let's dive in. Uh, you want to go ahead and shuffle up our decks and kind of get all that going? I already shuffled, so I'm going to draw my five. Same here. I am looking, what am I looking for? A chance cube, I think. Are you looking for anything in particular here? Maybe, maybe not. Also, just to be uh, candid and honest here, I built both of these decks uh, for practicing for Worlds, and Jeremy showed up and uh, just looked at his list. Um, so I'll be curious to see if you do anything interesting. That's what I'll keep. I'm going to mulligan four. I will as well. All right. Now, for people that are watching that maybe don't know, uh, at what point did you start working on Destiny? Uh, I came along when we were working on the, the two-player box in about set three, it was about the same time. So like Empire War, two-player starter, Force Friday thing? Yep, we're in there, so. All right, so set up. Um, after set up, we have to uh, roll off to see who's going to go first, so we'll roll our character dice. I got a five. I also got That's five. an impressive roll out of Yoda Hondo. That's true. Two specials on both characters. All right, uh, back to five for me. Uh, Man, wow. you're a monster. Five? I, that's crazy high for that deck. All right, six. You got Surely. Me. Surely I get this one. All right, so I get to choose the battlefield. Um, I will go ahead and choose my battlefield uh, because I do not like yours at all. So yours will go away. You'll get two free shields. And uh, then your plot's going to trigger which is going to give you another free shield somewhere of your choice. Here's Loading up on Hondo. Hondo. Okay, so before we jump in, Plots um, came out. Well, was that Legacies when the, the first plots, yep. plots hit? That's obviously a new card type, and it, it does something like that. Um, one-time effect, um, as of current, right? All one-time effects. And before Very we even simple. jump into the game, I'm going to bring up a preview from Wave of Force, which is set five. Uh, called Long Term Plan, and I want to get your, your take on this, because this is wild to me for a few reasons. One, it's three cost, and it's red. Um, and then it has an action on the plot. Instead of like a start of game effect like we just saw with the shield, we get exhaust this plot to place a resource on it, or res to resolve one of your dice, increasing its value by the number of resources on this plot. Now, the way that reads seems like the resource doesn't come from like your resource supply. Right. Um, but you have this effect once, once a turn, basically, um, you can exhaust the plot to take a resource from the reserve and put it onto the plot, and then in the future you can use an action to resolve it by increasing it by that number. Um, what? Tell me about the design process here. Like you're at, you have plots which we had in set four, and in set five you had a plot that has an ongoing kind of effect on the game. Yeah, so we start with plots in set four. It'd be very simple and straightforward. So they're all just neutral gray plots that have like a one-time ability. 
So step four, they're just very simple, straightforward to introduce them. This is kind of a new thing. Let's start lightly, and then step five, we want to take to the next step. So we have a lot of more interesting ones in there with, you know, colored ones and ones that are, are affiliated now. It's, you know, hero only. Oh, so. I didn't notice the hero side. So you have to have a red hero to use this In order to use it, yes. And then how, how nervous are you? You know, you strike me from every conversation we've had about Destiny. Um, you know, you obviously have played a lot of games and you've been very good at a lot of them. Um, but to the math on this, right, it's like how nervous are you to add a plot that has an ongoing effect in a game like this, especially if the games do get longer. And in the last interview we had, you talked about wanting to make games four or five turns, uh, if possible. So the longer the game goes on, this plot gets pretty insane. It does. Uh, are you are you nervous about that at all? Yeah, it's. <laughs> I won't lie. I mean, but it's also exciting. Like you want to do fun, cool, interesting cards. So you know, sometimes my play is saved too much, but at times you want to push things, and I always want to kind of push the envelope at certain times. And yeah, we thought this is the right time for plots. You know, try to do some really cool, exciting ones. We had those very simple, straightforward ones at four. So let's take them to the next level and see what happens. So. Have an ongoing effect. So there's another new thing with these plots. You know, it can affect games much more all through the game. With you know, especially longer games, that one gets very powerful the longer the game goes on. So. Sure. And how how important? So it's red and hero. How important is the identity of the you know, as a lot of people say, the color pie of the game? Where I think with plots that get potentially more powerful and more specific, um, you could really start to establish a style of play for certain kinds of decks, right? Where it's like, if you have to bring a red character that's a hero to use this plot, um, that that really seems like it could open up a lot of doors on the design side of things. Yeah. So you definitely feel like the color pie is you know, very important. Try to help differentiate the factions and colors from each other. So one way to do this is, yeah, make those you know very strong cards be just a specific color and affiliation and try to balance it throughout each color. So. You know, Red Hero hasn't had you know the best, most playable cards so far in the game. You know, I've had some, but yeah, you know, it's been a lot of blue focused stuff. So we feel this is one of the cards that could help push Red Hero in that direction. And sure, very cool. All right, you ready, Devin? Oh uh, yeah. All right, so we're gonna we rolled off. We have the battlefield. We have our opening hands, um, and now it's time to to rumble. So I get first action. Oh man, this is interesting. I'm going to activate Thrawn. Uh, and he has an after I activate ability. Um, I can choose a number, and then I get to look at your hand and discard a card from it that costs that number. So I'm going to activate Thrawn, and I get to see what I roll before I have to choose my number. Um, you are running yellow hero, so I'm watching out here for easy pickings if I rolled the same results, which I didn't. Uh, and now I'm just going to take the standard, uh, I'm going to say two, in case you have a two cost upgrade, like a cunning uh, in your hand to, to spend those two resources on. So we're going to lay it out. And no twos, that hurts my soul. Uh, the other call is zero here for force speed, which you do have, that hurts. Two force waves, an easy pickings, and an impulsive. All right, I've seen, I've gained my knowledge, and maybe the hardest part of playing the Thrawn deck for me is remembering what's in your hand, even right now. It's really easy to like look for the two cost miss and then be like, ah, and then you pick your hand up and it's like, whoops. Yeah, that's one great thing about Thrawn, I know exactly what's in my hand, so you kind of map out the whole. we now remember, right? Yeah. But all right, so I activate Thrawn. It's your, uh, you're up. Well, let's start off with a four speed on Yoda. That seems good. Let's see here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and activate Mother Talzin. Uh, she also has a when I activate ability. There's a theme here. I'm gonna roll, uh, and then after I activate, I can look at either the top card of your deck or my deck, and if it's odd, I get to change the die to the side of my choice. So I'll choose myself. <laughs> Oh, the wow. pain. I have one non-odd card in my deck, and there it's it this chance cube. Uh, just the worst. I wanted that in my opening hand. All right. I have a feeling I know exactly how this game is going to go. <laughs> the pain. That's so funny. I can't, can't stand how hilarious that is. All right. I bet you're all two specials on Yoda, just to make matters worse. Okay, that's not bad. So we got a two focus, a smash, and a four speed. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and reroll. Uh, I'm gonna use this feel your anger to reroll because something tells me uh, that you're not gonna be rolling blanks with Yoda. I don't, I don't know why I feel not that either. way. No idea. 
I'm gonna roll this towel, so I'm gonna keep focus. I hope I don't get two of the same result, and I do. So I'm in easy pickings territory, which is bad. That's bad for me. <laughs> there he goes. All right, easy pickings. Uh, basically, let's remove two dice showing the same symbol, which is this is this is turning bad. Um, hmm. And you have that impulsive, so you can resolve that uh, focus side there. I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll again. I'm looking for money. Didn't get it. All right, uh, focus and the discard. I'm gonna play best defense. So I'll do three damage to Thrawn and I'll remove both of your Hondo dice. It's a good good classic card there from Awakenings. Yeah, a very good one. So what are you thinking at this point? Well, I wanna make sure I'm fast enough so you don't claim ahead of me. So you don't lose your three all shields. Those three, yeah, I guess looking back, I should <laughs> probably split up a little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, I didn't even think about that. Cause yeah, because yeah, you chose to put all three shields there. It's like a three damage claim. Which seems pretty good. Yeah, like I haven't really played this matchup before. I've been so focused on you know upcoming stuff, so I've really been playing too much real world destiny. It's more, you know, the future future stuff, so I'm yeah, not so quite familiar how, with this matchup. How far ahead are you in general normally? Like Quite a bit. Usually, you know, like he's about a year out, so. Okay, two or three sets ahead. Yeah, yeah. So you're playing a very different version yeah. of Destiny. Yeah. Can you can you tell me from the future, um, are games lasting four or five turns in your experience? Mm, it's hard to say on average. I mean, there's always different decks, different styles. So, I mean, there's still some really aggressive decks. So yeah, games can be quick, but there are some you know more slower control decks. So. It's always going to be you know, a challenge to try to hit a, uh, a right feeling there for how long a game should be. So a lot of it just depends on matchups. You know, you just get two aggressive decks, that's going to be a quick game. Two slower control decks, you know, it can be <laughs> a lot longer. It's yeah. Very different. So it's it's you know difficult to say what exactly the you know an average turn or average length game will be. Big how many cards do you have? Two. Two cards. How concerned are you about me claiming? A little bit? I guess it's not a huge deal. You're a much, you know, fairly slower, more of a control deck, so. Yeah, let's go ahead and go. I agree with that choice. Knowing what's in your hand. Oh man, looking for a special and not getting it. I'm gonna reroll, I'm discarding an all in here. Ah, the pain. I'm gonna be honest, this is not going great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How many cards in your hand? Two. So we got a force wave and an impulsive still. Yeah. I guess the other angle on this is like, you, you easy pickings here, uh, slows my turn so much that like, I think you could actually also like maybe impulsive here with the Yoda die and then turn to focus or turn to specials, special out claim, and then just go to the next turn. But probably is the best play just to get, prevent you from knocking those shields out too. So yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so impulsive has ambush, lets you resolve the focus. Two. Get all Yoda. Let's go ahead and get. It. Money in a shield. All right. You technically still have two actions to your claim. All right. I'm going to reroll again and try to get some value out of this turn. All right. That could have been worse. I'm going to resolve a two resource on Thrawn to gain two resources, and then my two focus is going to go away. So I discarded five cards and resolved a character die. That seems <laughs> super productive. <laughs> uh, as we're resetting here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit another card. Uh, we have uh, a new uh, battlefield, uh, which is actually 
I love it because it's so thematic. Um, but Bendy's Lair, um, this is the first battlefield I've seen. Uh, this is another new concept here that actually includes a die. Uh, so he's got a range damage, a two indirect, a focus, a two shield, and a resource. It also has a power action. Roll this die into your pool. After you take control of this battlefield, remove its die. Um, is that power action something you can only use if you control the battlefield? Yes. Um, so whoever has a battlefield, if you bring this, your opponent can actually get access to this. Yep. Um, they can take an action, once a turn, power action, to roll it in. Uh, but then anyone can claim to get rid of it. So, one, how was it designing, again, you're kind of going into new territory here, uh, with Way of the Forest, but designing a battlefield with a die? Uh, what's, the, what's the thoughts on that? Yeah, it's quite different. You know, battlefields are probably the toughest, toughest type of card to design. You know, it's, they're, overall, is isn't that many you know, really cool, interesting things. They're just kind of... They do some basic things. Yeah, for the most part, very simple, straightforward. Just something that's required for everybody to bring to the game. And so we want to try to think of, you know, push the boundaries, which is kind of something really different we could do with the battlefield. So one of the things is, well, what would a battlefield of die look like? So we try to a few different things, but we figured let's just try doing one to start with, you know, see what you know, players think and see how it feels. And it's, you know, it's a rare, so we try to do a very, you know, pretty simple, straightforward one. So with you know, power actions being introduced in set four, we figure that's probably a, a good idea for Battlefield with a die, just have a single power action rolled in and have some interesting play there with you know, your opponent always being able to claim it, just to uh, remove that die. And, and then be able to use it. Next turn, be able to use that power action kind of against you. So and they have power actions you only use once around. So even if you use it and they claim it, or if they have a way to take control of it, and then they can't use a power action again. So, but yeah, there's... Uh, a very a lot of design space there. Feel in the long term, we'll see what players think of it. We could potentially do more and see what kind of cool effects could come out of that. It's it's uh, a we'll, yeah. We'll see what players think. Well, and I think the you know crazy part of this design, um, not only does it feel very uh, thematic and that the Bendu could technically help either player, right? Yeah. But uh, it simultaneously seems like it would be good in a faster deck because you get to have the battlefield right, and you have an extra die all game could be a really big shift, right? Especially oh, yeah. one that's got two shields, two indirect damage, a focus, and a resource. Um, but at the same time, it's like, to use this, even if you are a fast deck, you have to take an action to roll it out. That's starting too. Uh, and then you're going to want to have the action to make sure you're, you're to resolve it, right? So your opponent can't get it. Um, so like, it's kind of a, an interesting balance here of like, rewarding a fast deck, but also slowing the fast deck down because they have this benefit that lets them take an extra action to get kind of something in the board. So uh, I'll be curious to see what people think about that one. This won't be the only one. We'll see that happening more in the future. So it's a very you know, fun dynamic to play with. Yeah, and I'm excited to see uh, potentially battlefields that are maybe specific to hero villain or colored. We've seen the neutral on the battlefields forever. Potentially, yeah. Uh, so I'm excited to cross that bridge. All right, you ready to dive into the next turn? Oh, uh, yeah. I drew my hand. I did, got a sneak peek so I could be thinking about my turn here. And you have the battlefield, so you get to go first. And this is, we both have a ton of money. This is the turn. It is, yes. Um, did you keep one of those force waves? You did. That's terrifying. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw it down. Speak of the devil. Make sure you don't knock that out. All right, I'm going to take some time here with Thrawn and not just immediately roll in. I'm going to play a chance cube for free. Uh, that way, I can't be on the top of my deck anymore. The pain. <laughs> All right, here comes Yoda. Mm. Still no Yoda specials. You and Steven are really good at not rolling that special. <laughs> All right, I'm going to activate Thrawn. Uh, I'm going to wait to call the number until I see what I get. There it is, the three. I love that. I'm going to call one, just in case you have a removal card that can get rid of that three. And you don't. Mislead, rebel, which is currently active, so maybe you do. You have an easy pickings if you want it. Repost, that could be fun. Hyperspace jump. All right, so I will get rid of... If I don't get rid of rebel, you basically have mislead in your hand still. So I may as well get rid of the bell and shut down these yeah, games. Good choice. All right, hyperspace jump, repost, and mislead. I'm going to write it down. 
it's the, the hardest part of playing Thrawn is how mentally taxing it is to remember everything. That's true, yeah. But yeah, three more money there. You'd be really rich. I like my cash. <laughs> yeah, let's go for Hondo. Hondo Anaka. That's a problem. Luckily, I have money to pay Hondo off. I'm going to gain three money here with a chance cube. Thrawn's taking a chance. And uh, now I'm at eight. I'm flush. This could go so bad for me. Yeah, I got a See, lot of dice sitting out there, so. Yeah, I mean, here's what's crazy, right? It's like, you can force speed for two actions. Resolve the two focus on Yoda to turn your Yoda die and your force wave to special. Then your next action can be specials to resolve all of your dice. Yeah, seems good. <laughs> <laughs> a good play, right? Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so four speed. <laughs> two action. I'm sure that's what you were calculating. All right, two so two focus with Yoda. This is this is special chaining. Which after you do this, and I start taking several actions after you claim, I'll ask you questions about it. All right, so you're chaining both the Yoda and the Force Wave to special, um, and you have another action still. Another action resolve specials. So. Okay, so Yoda die. Turn. Turn the Hondo to special, and you're still resolving special, so that lets you continue resolving, including the one you just flipped. Yep. And then let's go ahead and resolve. You're trying to do three to Talzin? Ah, you know what? I can't pay you, because if I do, you'll hyperspace jump. That's a, that's a problem. Actually, I have a smash showing. That could, that's fine. Uh, I will take the first three. Let's take that. This is a problem. Do another one. I do have to pay one for the force wave. Yeah, but I can't let you kill Towson. So I'll pay you A money. There you go. Use the money on force wave. All right, so three, I assume three to Towson, two, two to Thrawn. Two, one to Yoda. One to Yoda. Get a shield. Is that what that was? Yep. Okay, my action? Yep. And oh, yeah, you did have to pay one for the force wave. That's what you were saying. I get it now. Let's go ahead and play a Z6 uh, control baton on Talzin. I only get one action. Numbers <laughs> in my hand though. Mislead, hyperspace jump, repost. Oh no, you're about to kill me. We'll do a take back. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Okay, uh, I don't think I can stop it though. I don't know. I don't know what. What helps here? That's, I, I have nothing to stop it. I'm still gonna play it. I'm just caught on that. I don't have an answer. All right, repost here. Three damage uh, from the shields on Hondo. So this has redeploy. It's gonna move over to Thrawn. Talzin off the board. And we are seeing the uh, unlimited power of that deck. Uh, let's go. I should have paid one for one of those. Uh, Hondo dice is the, the error that happened. Um, we'll go three more for another Z6 on Thrawn. We'll pass. Um, let's focus into a two money on Thrawn. Sleep. Okay. Then I will claim. All right, I'll pass. All right. While I'm recuperating from that ride, uh, we're going to introduce one last preview here from Way of the Force, uh, which is Captain, or not Captain Rex, technically his name is just Rex. Um, clone Captain, he's 11, 14 points, legendary, 11 health, 1 range, 2 ranged, 2 indirect damage, a focus and a resource. He also has the uh, text, before you activate this character, you may spend a resource or spot a clone trooper to take control of the battlefield. Um, this speaks to a couple things for me. We obviously talked about the Bendu, uh, the Bendu's Lair, which is a battlefield that could be pretty cool to run with a character like this, and you can just kind of keep grabbing the battlefield unless your opponent takes that as their first action. Um, but it also seems like there's a certain amount of the like color identity coming across. So um, tell me, it, how does Rex symbolically represent the red hero uh, color spectrum in Destiny? Well, red overall. Yeah, Lug 7 control the battlefield. So he 
can use his ability to grab that to whenever you, you know, activate. And that's definitely a defining feature of red overall. And then like, like yellow is kind of the opposite. They would rather not have a battlefield. So that ways they don't to get rid of it or maybe have cards that get a benefit if you don't control it. But red, yeah, they're... One thing with, you know, um, multiple character lists is they tend to be slow. You know, gotta spend actions to activate. So it'd be tough to be able to claim that battlefield and be aggressive. So Rex has a nice way to have the, you know, a triple character team and still be able to have control of the battlefield. And, and then with, you know, clone troopers, you know, it's kind of very thematic to have them be, you know, captain of them and have two clone troopers on team and have a, you know, full 30 point team with all the clones? All the clones together, so. And so he doesn't count as a clone trooper, right? Right. It's just the actual clone tro title, clone trooper from yeah. Legacies, so. Very cool. Now, that's something we also saw in the two player starter, I think, which was the um, Ray's lightsaber, uh, Captain Phasma's blaster, Poe's blaster, where certain cards were better on certain characters. And now we're kind of exploring that further, which is like certain characters are better together, not just like synergistically in game. Is that something you think you'll keep? Uh, exploring as the game continues, right? The themed tie-in of like making characters better together. Yes, that's one thing I feel very strongly about is you know having try to bring theme across wherever possible. And one way to do that is you know it's very obvious. Just these cards are better with certain cards, and you know some players might not think that's the best way to go. It's kind of too obvious, but let me just do you know a handful of them here or there, and can really just make you know games. A lot funner for players to uh, make it feel they're getting rewarded for playing the cards they kind of want to play anyway. So, sure. A lot of those cards, you know, they're they're solid by themselves. You don't, you're not required to play certain cards. You know, like Rex can be played on other teams. You don't need clone troopers. You just gets a little bit more efficient, a little bit benefit if you do. So, sure. All those cards kind of the same way. They're they're good by themselves, but it might get just a little bit better if you play with other certain cards. So. Sure. And we've seen we saw a lot of that in the the preview article for Way of the Force, the, the first one that went up, which was. You had Grievous, who had his his things that were better with him, but also not just cards that weren't playable without him. Um, or you know, we saw the Luke that got previewed. The the uh, I don't know, Wizen Master. Now, what, what's his uh, subtitle? Uh, if you remember offhand, putting you on the spot. Reluctant instructor. There it is. That's right. Uh, but he seems he seems to go very well with Ray, even though it's not a direct like when Ray's on the board, you get some special benefit. But it's more of a synergistic play. Yeah, that was definitely um, intentional. You have another full thirty point team with two characters with, that make sense together. You know, four dice too. Yeah, that's something I've really been trying to push too is make those very thematic, iconic teams more valuable. You know, the past you know I've, you know had Han and Chewie you know set one, set two. You could play them as a team, but you only get three dice, yeah. so it just kind of feels like you're missing out. It's not like a... A full a, team. Yeah, you're, there's an extra die that could have been in there if we could have made the points a little different, so... Which you did with, like, the new Han and yes. the, uh, so the starter sure. from Legacies. Yeah, so, like, yeah, Han from, Han from set four, you can play him with Chewie with a full team, a full, full dice, yeah. or Leia, or other thematic pairings, so... Yeah. That's one thing I'm definitely going to try to do more... Of that going forward, try to feel like those iconic thematic teams get you know full value, make more just stronger overall. You know, like Han Chewie from set one and set two didn't didn't really win any tournaments at all. It just wasn't good enough. So yeah. with the new Luke and Ray, you know, I was trying to push those very iconic thematic teams and make them feel more like a a very competitive deck. So Luke definitely definitely got pushed. He's one example. We pushed him quite a bit. So. He seems good. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, I appreciate but, uh, that. I like old man Luke being, yeah, Luke being really he, good. He deserves yeah, to be I'm excited about that. a very good version now. So Yeah, kind of like Yoda, as we've now witnessed in this here game. Yeah. Uh, all right, you ready to dive back in the game? Yeah. All right, let's go on to turn three here. I continue feeling like I'm just getting rocked on camera here. Uh, I have the battlefield, though, so I'm going to go first. You ready to go? Uh, yep. Hmm. Let's activate Thrawn, and I'll look at my results before deciding what to call. And so even, you know, Force Wave over there, really powerful that last round, but somewhat, I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to reroll, trigger the Z6 to reroll this one. Uh, like that. And then I'm showing two twos. I can't let you easy pickings either of these sets, so I'm going to say one. 
All right. Uh, lone operative. Yeah, the one's going to go. Uh, handcrafted light bow, hyperspace jump, and second chance. Not great. Okay. Um, it'll be you. But light bow, an example of it, I really love the, uh, the design of light bow because I have one character left now, and so that card gets significantly less good for you. Because to basically use the special, you would have to do three damage to yourself. Oh, the force wave? Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. Not the light bow. It's, yeah. in, it's in my brain. I saw it, <laughs> and I was scared of it. You got some pretty good dice over there. Show some damage. But yeah, I'm fully healed at the moment, so it's not too worrisome. Let's... Really, who you're going to send that four damage against. Second chance really disincentivizes me to go after Hondo. That is true. Let's go ahead and <laughs> move the auto. There's that Yoda special. Um, let's go. Let's just go ahead and do it. Four damage to Yoda. Let's get on the board here. So at this point in the game, are you are you the kind of player that is just going to make consistent decisions to not give me a chance at all to get back in this game? Ideally. <laughs> you seem but, you seem that way, um, yeah. Yeah. You have three money there, so it is going to be but, hard for you to actually stick some damage on me. Without playing another upgrade, but I have a feeling that light bow might be making an appearance here. But well, yeah, one interesting thing about Talzin is you know you have a you know, much better idea knowing what's in your opponent's deck then. So sure, like yeah, they might have uh, an even card here or there, but overall it's going to be ones and threes. So and narrows it down quite a bit. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw out the light bow on Hondo. Seems seems good. I'm going to re-roll all three of my dice. Two focus, uh, disrupt, and blank. Here comes the pain. I need you to roll at least one blank. I'm going to be honest with you. Just give me one. None. Ugh. So bad. All right, let's do the math on this. You can do three, six that I can't do anything about. Let's... I'll use my two focus, turn my Throndi to a two resource, and my chance cube to a three money. Lots of money. That's what I do. And with all your money, though, you usually pay off Hondo. This is true. But between Force Wave and Handcrafted, you got six. Six damage potential, which is only one away from lethal. Let's start off with some specials. <laughs> Classic. Two money for Pay me. one. There you go. I can just pass it over. Thank you. To Yoda. All right. Yoda gonna get a money, and what's the other one? Turn that special. Light bow. Three go ahead, damage. Hit me for three. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and gain five money. Back at seven. Oh no, there's one card in here that, all right, cool. <laughs> Whew. There's one card I needed you not to get right there. Uh, I'm going to play Witch Magic. That's the card I didn't want you to pull. I reveal the top three cards of my deck, and for every odd card that I reveal, I can heal a damage from a character. So I will heal three damage from Thrawn, and we'll both get to see the cards that are, are coming. So we have Best Defense, Heirloom Lightsaber, and Snare. Don't like seeing that Snare. It's good. Although you did just get rid of my uh, three steps ahead. That's true. That would have been pretty amazing. So next turn, if I'd had that, it could have been three steps ahead, snare, right exhaust, Hondo, or Yoda, which would have been good. 
good for business. I'm not completely selling myself out of this game yet, but I'm gonna need some very positive things to happen quickly. What you do here will tell me a lot about how you play this game. If you're willing to eat that force wave to do an extra damage. You could also just like spin it to like a two indirect, right? Hit me for two. That's not bad right now. It's not. Yeah, one damage can make all the difference. As we witnessed with a uh, thousand. Your three shield move paid off, by the way. It did, yeah. That was, that was pretty huge with the repost. Let's go. Focus it up. Let's do the two. All right, I'm going to replace my chance cube with a rocket launcher. Get, see how much damage I can get on the board. Two indirect. So I'm going to go up to seven, and then I will go ahead and claim. Worth a reroll? Yeah. I'm not going to be very fast with it anymore. There's at least a shield. Going to go for that value. I don't think I'm going to be decking you anytime soon. Probably not, so let's go for it. Uh, how deep does he go? Shot to focus. I don't even remember what that card is anymore. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, I think that's good. Good go. Well, two focus really likes me. <laughs> All right, the tides have turned. I can feel it. All right, I need I need some miracles here. All right, did you draw up? I did. All right, let's dive in. I'm gonna go ahead and just open the turn. I'm gonna activate Thrawn. I'm gonna call a number. What's the worst thing that could happen here? I will calculate that in a second. All right, so I have a two. All different sides. This is actually great. I could re-roll my Z6s with their ability. Um, but I'm not going to. I, I'm fearful of uh, easy pickings. So I guess I could re-roll it and then if I hit it. Um, did you discard that hyperspace jump? You did. I like that. I'm going to say three because I don't want another light bow and I definitely don't want a hyperspace jump. Hey, speak of the devil, there's the light bow. I'm gonna go ahead and give her the light bow. You have a cunning, an impulsive, a rebel, and an entangle. All right, seems good. I guess technically if I wanted to, I could see your hand and then choose whether I want to reroll or not. Yeah, so you trigger at the same time. I'm gonna do that, because I saw you don't have any easy pickings, right? That was, that was not in your hand, because they're both after I activate. After you roll this die into the pool, after I activate, which... It's essentially the same. Cool. So I'm just going to reroll this. See if I can get more damage showing. You have that entangle, so... There you go. That'll stop you from removing too much of my damage signs here. All right, so you had entangle, impulsive, the light bow that I got rid of, and man, this is where it gets to be a problem. Rebel, you had a rebel. Uh, so if you had a discard side showing, you could... Easy pickings of me right now, but you don't. You have a snare. Mm-hmm. I have a feeling this game's gonna be closer than it has a right to be, unless you just vanquish me here. Yeah, it's a uh, dead Yoro, unless I knock out one of those damage dice. Which you could do right now, technically, right? Yeah, I got You can entangle there. To. But part of the problem, too, is that if you spend your entangle, and I know you don't have any control after that. I can just focus into lethal again. But you also run the risk of if you don't if you don't entangle now, I could easily like focus with Thrawn into a three, and then you only get to remove one of my dice for that value. So let's go ahead and do the entangle. These two? Yep. Alright, remove two of my dice. Let's see. Um I'm gonna go ahead, and this is the power of Thrawn, I think. Uh, getting to know what's in your hand, even though, all right, so you use the Entangle. How many cards in your hand now? Three. Rebel. Three already? If there's Impulsive yep. and Rebel. Right, you still have a Rebel? And then there's the other card. Um, mm, Repost? 
I don't remember. Oh, cunning. Even better. Well, that's great. That's great news. I'm going to... Um, let's just go ahead and snare. And we'll uh, grab Hondo. Shut him down. This gives you limited time with the Yodo. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play Witch Magic. I reveal the top three for every odd card, which is going to be all three of them. I heal one. I've got a Force Wave, an Overconfidence, and a Fang Fighter, and it'll be back to you. I almost take that money from you now. That's pretty good because it's going to shut down the uh, rocket launcher. Unless you uh, get more money off Thrawn. I will try. I know you will. So, three cards in hand. Mm hmm. Yeah, let's make you go for it. All right. Disrupting the money. Discard a best defense. And we will re roll Thrawn's die. Back to two focus. You got two cards in the hand? Yeah, let's go. Cool. Seems pretty good. Um, let's try again. Just re-roll the Thrawn die. I think that's my best odds. One disrupt. Not quite. Two. All right, take two more on Thrawn. And I'll try again. Last chance. Yeah, I'll just re roll Thrawn. Two money. You got it. <laughs> Still not going to be enough to kill Yoda, but better than just two damage. Man, that was big. I needed that. Shield on Yoda. I'm going to go ahead and resolve the Thrawn die for two money. I'm going to put the cut in over there. Um, let's go ahead and do three damage to uh, Yoda there. Resolve my three for one. You want to four speed out of the round with a battle claim? Sure. <laughs> and an action to boot. I'm going to go ahead and do two more damage to Yoda. And we'll reset for the next round. We'll see if I can wiggle out. Now, you saw three of the cards in my deck here. Yeah, two were useless. <laughs> <laughs> so Thanks. I'm happy with that. Yeah, that seems better than useful. Roll on Yoda. Let's see your discard pile we got in there. The mark of a true savant. Diving in, seeing what options I even have left. One bad roll from you, and one really good roll from me. If I can knock you out off the board and then get it one-on-one, -on -one, just start paying Hondo off. I mean, I could have it three steps ahead, so I'm just going to force loose. Oh, man. That hurts. Let's activate Thrawn. Uh, I will re-roll um, both of my Z6s here with their abilities. All right, and then I will name one, just in case you have another illusion or a control card. All right, let's get rid of that overconfidence. I don't want you <laughs> re-rolling my threes. Let's see what you get. I need a, not that. That's fine. It's just going to make my life difficult. Um, let's give Yoda so I can't stop that. Um, let's do three damage uh, to Yoda. So I assume you're going to, yep, force illusion there. Maybe I will back here. You're getting pretty low there. Nice cards going to the discard. So at this point, basically, uh, if you don't resolve your Yoda dice, he's going away. Yep. Um, but this is the thing with special chaining, right? Like... As it sits right now, you can literally resolve all of your dice in the pool. And you may as well put the one damage on Yoda, because if I'm going to get rid of him, it's going to be coming from that three. 
All right, you're resolving specials? Yeah. Resource. All right, Ryota into Yoda for a resource. Another resource. All right, two actions. Three to Thrawn, I assume two to Hondo, one to Yoda. All right, Yoda down to one. Two actions. Seems good. <laughs> oh no. You, you have so many ways to just ace me right here. I guess technically you have to get the light bow or the kind. And you did. <laughs> With another action. Well, let's resolve specials. Okay. And you're triggering the Honda special there. I'll pay you one. Let's copy the three damage. To All right. Throw. And there you go. Good game. Excellent. Thank you for, uh, for joining me for that. What's your... Uh, I obviously, I think I made a huge blunder on the, the second turn. Um, which was letting you, uh, or not paying you for both of the Hondo dice, and then that led the Force Wave kill Talzin, and then I just got way behind. Um, what's your What's your take on that? How do you feel about that game? Yeah, it was um, the repulse there. I guess if you uh, remember, it my hand. Maybe play things a little differently there, since it was pretty key knocking her out so quickly there. So, but yeah, it's uh, it is a very skill intensive deck. So. <laughs> Not saying you're not skilled. You definitely. <laughs> I know you for a long time. You're Underhanded a great player. Burn. Oh, no. oh no, it's pretty straightforward, right? It's both our decks kind of doing their thing, which is cool. For the most part, yeah. What I like is that uh, I feel like right now in this in the game, you have a lot of different kinds of decks represented. Where you have Thrawn Talzin, it's very control and long term thinking kind of a game. You have Yoda Hondo, which is very money based and like very quick. Um, all the way to, he, you know, there's mill decks, there's yeah. vehicle decks that are around, um, and I'm really curious to see the meta this weekend. Um, as, as, you know, kind of going more back to future base before we get out of here, I'd be curious, um, you know, at this point in the game, uh, it is, we're finally getting to the point where there's, you know, four sets out, going to be five in the future at some point, the way the force. Um, what are you most excited about right now in terms of the future of the game and what you're exploring and experimenting with that we maybe haven't seen out of the first you know, three or four sets of the game. Are there any concepts that you're really enjoying the development process for uh, that you can actually talk about? That's a tough one to actually talk about. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stuff one last cow, yeah, there, yeah. A lot of stuff I can, so yeah, it's hard to say what one really could talk about. I mean, I guess one thing like plots, evolution of plots, I'm really excited for to, to see, you know, with set five, definitely took my step further. And there's definitely further steps to take with those, so that's definitely one thing I'm very excited to see what players think of those with uh, there's a lot more interesting ones in set five and of course set six will be imagining more they'll maybe take the next step further so and is there is there a point of obviously one of the things about destiny that makes it so great is ultimately how simple it is um and so how how much of a concern how much of of this is in your mind when like you know you add plots which is a new card type and then you make plots slightly more uh you know nuanced, right? You have red plots and blue plots and hero and villain plots and actions that happen throughout Through a game, the game with a plot, yeah. right? And you add dice to the battlefield and like you keep stacking it. And so um, do you feel like, you know, there's a difference obviously between building a solid foundation uh, that gives you enough to work with to kind of really explore the game and add a lot of things and also just like too much complexity. So how, how do you find a balance there? Well, that's a great question. That's one thing we're always concerned about is just overall complexity. Like I said, the game's, you know, it's a, at its core, is a very simple, elegant, straightforward game. There's a fantastic foundation, which we're trying to build upon. So, yeah, it's uh, tough to say, you know, how much complexity is too much. So, that's one thing we're always very concerned about. And I think in the long run, we'll definitely be seeing more interesting twists and takes on things. And, you know, who knows? What might lie ahead, you know, you saw with set four, is quite a bit of cool new stuff. So I think with future base sets, we'll try to keep it about on par like that. You know, maybe potentially other new card types or potentially another new die size. I mean, 
that's kind of the ideal time to do it is in a base set. So, so maybe we'll see that in set seven. I mean, potentially, I mean, I won't things say, like I won't, that. I won't say every set would every base set will have that kind of stuff. Like just I mean something kind of new and different. Ideally, maybe not as much as set four. I mean, set four is like the first true base set, so you kind of really did a lot with that one to really you know. You know, build upon the foundation. You know, we had started with set one, you know, very simple, straightforward. So we had a lot of space, in my opinion, to expand upon. So we took a big step with set four. Like I said, set seven, we'll definitely take another step. Maybe not quite as big, but that's, cool. that's the time to do, in my opinion, is with ace sets. You know, like, but once a year to really, you know, take another big step. Sure. All right. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much. Thank it you. It was a pleasure. Uh, As always. Thanks for you know showing me how to play Destiny here. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, we will be back with plenty more, so stay tuned. And until then, keep playing. That was that was bad. That was tough. <laughs> that that was tough. But the spoilers were great. <laughs> the spoilers were good. If you enjoyed this and our other Destiny content, we have Destiny products for sale on our store. Saga token sets are our custom sets there, and then we also have Saga sets, which are an incredible deal. Uh, it's all of the cards from the upcoming sets sent directly to you. We still have some of those available, so check those out. And don't put zero cost cards in your Thrawn deck. <laughs>